Hey everybody, Matthew Morris, MM Wood Studio. I'm here in front of this Grizzly G06 34X. And I've gotten a lot of questions about this machine on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and today I want to spend some time talking about it, giving my impressions to you after owning it for about 18 months and using it here in the shop to build a couple of projects. So let's get into it. First off, it is a 12 inch jointer planer combo machine. That means it can pass a piece of wood that's up to 12 inches wide, both in jointer and planer mode, which makes it really, really valuable in the shop if you're trying to build something larger. So for instance, I just built a standing hand tool cabinet. Now that depth is 12 and a half inches, but I was able to mill up material that was wider, glue it together and with just two part pieces instead of three pieces or four in order to get my sides, top and bottoms. That was invaluable because it's less work in the shop to glue two pieces together than to glue four. And at the same time, you got less problem, less ability to have errors creep in um, and having your boards warp or change shape or whatever it is, if it's just two versus four. At least that's my opinion. It's got a V-shaped helical cutter head far superior to any straight knife machine I've ever had before. It stays sharper longer. It's really easy to switch these around. It's been 18 months. I'm not using it every day, but I've been building projects here and you probably won't have to change out these inserts in the first year, maybe in the second or third, I don't know, but I haven't run into that yet. This is a heavy machine. This is a four to 500 pound beast. Um, it's on top of a mobile base right now. It can move around the shop very easily with that mobile base. That's my other machine I own, which is the Hammer A331, which I own for, I don't know, probably somewhere close to 12 years now. That's a great planner combo machine as well. And we'll spend a little bit of time in this video comparing the two, but I mainly want to talk about this Grizzly machine here. So it's a 12 inch jointer planner combo machine, as I said. The tables are independent of each other. So you lift both the rear and the front separate instead of lifting them together like some other machines like the hammer has. You do have to take the fence and the guard off the machine before you go into planer mode. So it just takes a few minutes to move over from jointer to the planer mode. Now you do have two different dust shrouds here. One is just for jointer mode and one is for planer mode. So you'll find yourself moving your dust collection the hose from one to the next. Both of those ports would connect from the rear end of the machine. Now it does require 220 voltage in your shop. I myself have a 30 amp circuit coming just dedicated to this. Um, that provides enough power and juice to it and I haven't had tripped it once since buying it so that's taking care of this no problem. Tables themselves again they're 12 inches. It's um, solid cast iron just Put some wax on it and it's ready to rock and roll. The fence itself is connected here in the back. That's the only major point of which of connection. There is a guard in the front part of it that goes over the blade. Um, so what that means is when you're running a board across it, you're going to have some deflection up here in the front. Big question is, does it make your piece go out of square? And I do not believe it makes the piece go out of square. Um, I ran bores through this, edge glued them using the in and out method and everything lined up perfectly along the entire length of the board and some of those boards were three feet long. When I set this machine up, the bed in the rear, so the infeed bed, was slightly lower, so like this, I'm just exaggerating it, than the outfeed bed. There is a spot to make an adjustment with some shims and one piece of blue tape did that for me. Now it does have a more traditional guard, American style guard here. A couple of two thoughts on that. One is when you put it in, when you lock it down, because you'll be taking it on and off often. You'll have to take it off in order to go into planer mode. You have to put it back on to go back into jointer mode. When you do that, I tend to have my forward fingers in the front when I lock it down to have it just kind of glide and be a little bit higher than the planer in feed and out, or jointer in feed and out feed beds. So it doesn't scratch the tables. I made that mistake once. Don't make that mistake like I did. Now, there's a few things I 
dislike a little bit about this machine, but I've learned to live with and work around. So let me talk about those. The first one is changing the height of the infeed table. In order to change the height of the infeed table, there is a piece that's on the right that's on the towards the back of the machine. You spin it to so grab it and you turn it to go higher or lower. But when you do that and the table's locked, it doesn't move. It doesn't change the height of the table. So you have to unlock the table, do that, and then relock the table. At least that's what I found. And that's how it's worked for me. Topic number two would be planar mode. One of the things you need to do is to remember to lift up this handle here to change the belts so that the planer will run. You don't want to leave this up all the time because then it's going to wear down the belts and all my other joints or planer combo machines I've ever had before, including the hammer, have the exact same mechanism. I'm just so used to the hammer A331 and it's, or any of the hammer series, is you can get a wheel. It has measurements on it as you spin it, you can, it shows all the way down to a thousandth of an inch. This isn't like that, so you could probably add like a Wixley uh, gauge on the side and get that once you adjust it. Uh, this doesn't have it, so I've just been using a digital dial caliper to get close and then slowly get to exactly what I want. But it'd be really nice to have that kind of precision in this machine. Now, when you're going into planar mode, you have to take off the fence, take off the guard, and then individually raise both the in-feed and out-feed jointer tables. This requires you to do a lot more work than, say, the Hammer A331. Is it the end of the world? No. Can you deal with it? Let us build some shelves. And that worked out really well for me. Everything is right where the machine is, and I don't lose track of it. This machine, you can't add bolt-on supports in the in-feed or out-feed in the jointer mode, or in the out-feed in the planer mode. In the Hammer A331, you can do that. You can bolt-on bars add extensions, level those out, so you can run an, easily run an eight foot board. So that's really nice. And on the A331, which I've never done before, is you can add a mortising um, machine to it. It plugs into where the cutter guard, the head is right here, and you can add a whole XYZ mortiser. There's a difference though. This is a machine that costs $2,000 or more less. I bought this for $3,500, and I think 12 years ago I bought the Hammer A3, A331 with straight knives in the $5,000 range. Not closer to five than $5,500. Um, not including shipping, I believe, for either of those in my, yeah, I did not include shipping for those two prices, so that's the price without shipping. For a couple extra thousand dollars, you can get a Austrian engineered and Austrian built machine and it'll probably last you your entire lifetime. I've had mine for 12 some odd years now. This machine here, I think is gonna last 10, 12 years for sure. Is it gonna last 20 years? Probably. It's a really well-built machine and if you take care of it, it will last that long. The extra couple of thousand dollars, if you have a small shop and you're not worried about running much longer pieces over this, um, you can definitely buy a couple of stands for in-feed and out-feed support. You're okay without having a digital indicator and you gotta use digital dial calipers, then that couple extra thousand dollars can be spent on other machines in the shop. It can buy a bandsaw, like my Laguna 14BX I bought for the shop here. It can buy a Panto router, buy additional equipment for your shop to help you build more, more furniture or do more things in your furniture. So it's really up to you which way to go. I own both. One of them's gonna go into the school. Uh, when that opens, that's the hammer. And just for a jointer, I'm not gonna use it in planar mode, just as a 12 inch jointer. Um, and this one is gonna stay here in this shop for videos and whatnot for the school and personal projects. Would I buy this again? Absolutely. I would buy this machine every day for a small shop like this, where I'm not looking to build really large pieces of furniture you know, eight foot long tables. Um, just anything that's got really long lengths in it. Um, you could, of course, you know, skip plane and, and get around that for a tabletop. I've done that before, I've done that myself. Um, even with the Hammer A331, just to do it that way so other people could see how to do that. Uh, the last dining table I built. But 
I really, this is a great machine. I, I think with the helical cutter head and the quality that, that comes off of this, it's phenomenal. That's my thoughts on the Grizzly G0634X. I do love it. And I really like how the green looks too in the shop. So let me know what your thoughts are below in the comments. Do you own one of these? Have you been using it? Uh, have you upgraded from another combo machine to this? You know, whatever it is, let me know what your thoughts are below. Love to hear it. Love to hear stuff from you guys. Um, like, share, and subscribe. And have a great week in your shop.